Hello, welcome to episode 27 of our Ostrov Alpha 4 Let's Play. It is September of 1745 in our town, and we have quite a bit of stuff we can get into in today's episode. Uh, mostly, I think, as was suggested by one of our watchers on YouTube here, build a second church, probably in this general area. So let's actually go ahead and start off with that. We'll put it right next to the school in this general little riverbank area. Let's see, where can we kind of place this where it's going to be next to the river and not be completely in the way of stuff here? I do like the idea of it being pretty close to the water. It's not going to want us to do because of uneven terrain, so let's go Actually, right about here, we'll put that there. We'll go ahead and let them get started with that. This will give us a nice opportunity to kind of fence off this area right around here. We'll leave room for a walkway, of course. And you know what that means. It's time for our favorite thing. Well, after I get this fixed, we'll go ahead and put down big arch number two because it would not be an episode of an Ostrov Let's Play here unless I put down big arch number two. Oh, you know how it goes. We'll just put that right there. Then we will come by with fence number four and do one of these numbers right here. And we'll hook that up there. We'll do the same over here. And again, it's not going to be exactly perfect, but it's going to be good enough. We'll get that done there. I really like that. I don't have to keep reselecting the fencing thing. That was a fantastic addition. So this church being built was actually going to disrupt this path, which is a good thing because Straight lines are boring. Straight lines are boring, he says, when you have all of this and this and this and this. I know, it's the, the whole idea behind the grid is you have stability from which you can then later deviate, as we will be doing. But now we have this thing set up over here. Again, this isn't perfectly straight, but it's close enough. These lovely cottonwood trees around the school, I think we can go ahead and plant some more of in this general area. We'll start by just kind of matching on this side, too close to another tree, I know. And it'll be okay, just let me place the stuff. Sometimes the game gets angry with me. We'll do one there. One there. We'll have a couple more. We'll do one there. And that'll get us most of the way there. That'll be fine. So those will grow up, and the church is coming along quite nicely. I never watched it get built from the top. I always have it kind of pointed at it in some sort of cinematic angle. But the, uh, I don't know, the inside of this building appears to be hollow, aside from this little doorway right here. This guy is just phasing through all sorts of walls. He's got enhanced powers, I suppose. Anyway, this, oh, that's not the building, that's a person. Yeah, so they are very, very slowly building the church. Let's see, can I sell you anything? I can indeed. Clothing, well, no, we'll wait for that. Iron, we have plenty. Never buying honey again. Or buckwheat. Really, we don't need too much of this, so that's fine. So what I was thinking with this church is this little parcel right here, we would turn into, not not a graveyard, but like a, a lovingly landscaped churchyard, if you will. So we'll go ahead and just kind of have this. Ideally, I would like to have a 
fence set up here, more or less directly leading to this. And then at some point, kind of come along matching the angle of the church, right, like so. To where we would actually kind of fence this off so people can't use this as a shortcut anymore and would have to go through here. So we'll come down all the way to the water here. If I can get this to line up appropriately. So we'll put that there. Now I believe that will suffice. And then right in here, we can turn this area into kind of a uh, little conservation place. Let's see, spruce trees, cottonwood trees are already going to be growing on this edge. So I think if we take some more birch trees and plant them in the general vicinity of the church, that would be a smart idea to match with the rest of the town. I think one thing I will be trying moving forward in this Let's Play is hints of uniformity with a little bit of variation. Like, see right here you have these angled fences, but it doesn't connect here. And there's no fence on this side, just kind of separating different areas. We could also probably put a couple more fishing things over here, because this is kind of an industrialized area. And then you have church and school, and then you have all these homes over here this uh, forestry will be going away eventually but this church is now done and that is a fantastic option for people who don't want to go over here this will be a little closer to these people as well and one thing we have not been doing is we've not been making sure that there is adequate water supply down here so we'll come around here to this side of our granaries and we'll go ahead and put a couple of wells in for our citizens We'll just put that right there. And those two, we'll turn those off for production. That'll be just for the use and edification of these people as well. Actually, let's see. Do these people have any honey? They've got honey. And you know what we're about to do. We're about to go check on these people. Yep, 5,490 honey. That is quite a bit. Just, just, just a little bit of honey. You know, nothing super special. So we did put our trees here, but no church would be complete without a bell post in front. And you know, I actually don't mind that this is kind of angled right here. That's a little bit of variety. I just want to make sure that the pull cord is in the right spot for the bell. You can't really see this angle. I wish we had first person view, but we don't. Actually, you know, I think that'll be fine. We'll, we'll think of some organic way of doing this, but this area right here is now set up pretty well to be developed further. And I think we could go, not necessarily needing fishing docks for fishing, but we can turn some of them into just, oh, well, I guess the game decided for me. We're not putting any fishing docks over here because the terrain is uneven. That's disappointing. I wonder if it's too uneven for another trading dock. Hmm, appears to be so. And there's nothing else I can really build on the water that I'd actually need. Hmm. Well, that's disappointing. Such is life. All right, turn off production here and here as well. And now these houses should be in pretty good shape. As far as jobs go, we actually have open vacancies. So we could afford to build some more houses. And I know last episode I did say I wanted to commit to building some houses more freeform in the woods. So you know what? No better time than the present, am I right? And we are not going to be using F to rotate. No, we are going to be using R and T, and these are going to be freeform in the woods. I know, gasp. It's not aligned to the grid. He's gone mad. Well, the jury's still out on that last one, but I think there's nothing wrong with having a little bit of variety and seeing some houses in the woods. So we'll go ahead and put a few back in here. 
and we'll see how it grows. We can add more and more, of course. But we'll just put right there. And then, of course, right here, backing up to these houses, we will build a line of cottonwood trees to kind of denote that as a separation. And these houses are still close enough out till about here to shop at this market, and that is completely fine. So we'll come down here, we'll put a house there. I already have one here. We'll tuck this one in right there. All right, so that is seven houses. I want to commit to putting 10 in the woods here. I don't want them to be too close to each other. Let's see, I can put another one here. I'm trying to find places that don't require trees to be deconstructed so it can try and preserve a little bit of the character that it, this little forested area has. All right, so that is nine. We need one more. So we have one there, one there. We have one there. We could put one on the edge here, but no. Here, here, there, there. Mm -mm -mm -mm. Can I get away with putting in one in this area right here? No, there's already one there, I think. Last one for now, we'll go right in here. And that's going to be 10 unless my game's going to crash, which would be very annoying. Hmm. Well, that is certainly annoying. Let's uh, try that again. Oh, that's good. File is corrupted. Well, at least it, uh, it told me that. That's disappointing. So we'll go, uh, we'll go back here and see how much progress we lost. Looks to be about four minutes worth. Ooh, boy. All right, so we lost quite a bit of, uh, quite a bit of stuff here. The game crashed and it corrupted my auto save. So I'm gonna go ahead and actually save again, right here. And uh, it, it's kicking us all the way back to December 1745. That's it's not too much time, but still pretty annoying. Anyway, that's there. They're in the midst of building these uh, wells right here. So I guess I can just dispense with the reasoning behind all this, and we'll just get to placing houses again, I suppose. But yeah, like I was saying, we're going to try a couple of new things and a little bit of organic in the woods is never a bad thing. I think I might want to put right here. I had, see, I, I kind of liked how I had it set up before, but it's kind of hard to, uh, to duplicate that, so we have four right there. We can probably get away with having another one right here. Oops, let's get that back up. All right, so we've got five, and we're in this general area. We'll go ahead and migrate here. There's six. Of course, we need to be cognizant of being close enough to the market, but I think that's not going to be that big of a problem for us here. That'll be seven. Again, try to avoid chopping down trees if we don't have to. That's eight. Closest is here and here. So we can put another house right here. There's nine. I'm going to save again here, just in case there's some sort of glitch that happens, because it was when I put that tenth house down that the game decided it uh, didn't want to work anymore. 
So let's see. I think I can do one right about here might be good. And it is close enough to the market. Good. All right. So there's 10 houses. The game did not crash. And they're building this house in the middle of the woods. So the pathing will be interesting to see how people go about doing their business. And we will probably need to place a, uh, a well somewhere in here, depending on how things are going to be going. But for now, we can get sunflower out of here. Salt. Oh, wow, we've got a lot of salt. Okay, we can probably tone down the salt. Hemp. I'll always buy some of that so we can make more clothing. Can't seem to produce that fast enough. That could be a future project. But I think at this point, we've done most of the uh, have-to-do-it things in this game. So it's all about style now. Making something that's really interesting, unique, and most importantly, fun. So now all this uh, grid fun in the center of the town is going to give away, give away rather, to a little bit more nuanced design. And sometimes just smatterings of random houses in the middle of nowhere. So that's one down. We'll let them build all that stuff for a while. People are complaining about not having money. Oh, well, we can kind of fix that a little bit. I don't think we've raised the rent quite high enough. I think that would have been episode two or episode three, where I sat here and clicked individually before somebody told me that you could, uh, actually hold down shift so useful information if you weren't aware hold down shift and it'll have the increments go quite a bit higher won't do too much of this but 150 is too low and that's probably why a lot of these people are poor so we'll just have this go all the way up to 250 for now and then we will go do something else and again i don't uh i haven't messed with the wealth tax yet I'll wait for the people in the Ostrov Discord to do their magic with that. I believe now... Yeah, they, they also build a lot slower out here in the woods, but eh, it's not a race. We're here to have fun anyway. Another house in the woods is complete. Now, in the uh, southern United States, like the area where I live, there are not really any spruce trees around. That's more of the Pacific Northwest around like, uh, Seattle. Well, Seattle's a, a city, but in that, that part of the country, we have pine trees. And thank God you cannot build... Oh, you can build pine trees. Is that new? Or am I just dumb? Well, we have pine trees and we have sweet gum trees. And they drop these really, really annoying... I guess technically you could call it fruit, but it's really more of a seed pod. And you step on them and it hurts, or you run over it with a lawnmower and then it shatters a window or gets knocked back into you. And it's, it's not a good time. And uh, a lot of people in the south, especially in rural areas, will have trees pretty much almost exactly as close to their house as these are right here. Not a great idea for storms, but it makes things cozy and fun and uh, dampens sound as well. So it's a very, very peaceful, serene. It's, but it's all fun games until there's a tornado or... Uh, remnants of a hurricane or something, and then you have a hundred foot tall pine tree crashing down on your house. Not a fun time. Happens quite a bit down here. But anyway, let's take a look here. Now, this uh, thick kind of road thing is going to take a while to go away because it's a very common thing. These people are complaining they don't have enough food variety. Well, they'll figure it out. I'll take too long as far as fishing goes i think we are probably fine on producing fish honestly actually no hmm well it is march and it just just started back fishing season again but they got plenty here and there's you know, there's enough we could probably stand to have some more fishing jobs I was originally, of course, before the crash, I was going to try and put uh, more fishing docks here so we could just have some that were only doing dried fish. But it was not to be, and really none of this is habitable according to the 
fishing things. And I don't really have anywhere over here. Wow, not even until I get down here. Okay, so maybe we won't mess with any of that quite yet. Now I could put some here behind the school. So I might just I might just go ahead and put one right there. We do have people living in this general area, but I don't want to have things built too far off. Of course, there's houses in the way here. Probably wouldn't hurt to have one there as well. But it's going to take a while for them to build all these houses in the woods. And I did have at least one person say they missed the time lapses. So I'll tell you what we'll do is we will just travel along and watch them build these houses in time lapse. Enjoy. That is the last of our forest houses for now. If you're at a low angle, you can't really see anything except the smoke from the chimneys. But you come up here and now you can see we have 10 houses just kind of patchwork dotted through here. Now, it appears there has been some sort of cataclysmic event with food supply here while we've been waiting. I wonder what the cause of that could be. Well, there's nothing there, and there's nothing there. Nothing there, nothing there, nothing there, nothing there. Wow. Well, what happened to all of our food? Okay, there's cows. Go ahead and slaughter some of these. That is absurd. Why? Why would they all do this? Well, this is an episode of absolute excellence right here, my friends. We have caused all sorts of problems here. We'll just go ahead and fix that. And we'll leave that one alive and then here, here, here. Now, if you are wondering why I'm only killing bulls, it's because cows produce milk. The female cows produce milk, and the bulls are really only good for breeding. Chickens are still alive. They've got some food. They don't have a ton of food left themselves. Of course, we can't do anything about that at this exact moment. I wonder why all of our food has... Uh, dried up. But we do have a trader here. Go ahead and buy a bunch of dried fish. We can afford it. We can sell sunflower oil as well. Clothing, we have 3330. Okay, yep, by all means. Raspberries, we'll sell those. Onions, we'll sell those. We have so much honey, but I'm not going to buy 6,000, I'll buy 1,000. So I don't know, it could, could just be a uh, an issue of perfect storm, right place, right time, or I guess wrong place, wrong time. So that's a fun way to come out of a time lapse at the uh, end of the episode and find out that your town is starving, or almost starving, on the verge of it. Well... We have a lot of wheat, at least, so the uh, chickens won't die, assuming that ever gets harvested. But we did add some more people to the town, which is always fun, I suppose. We're at 588, edging ever closer to 600. 
If you remember my Alpha 3 Let's Play, which is available for your viewing, so you should so should you choose. Uh, we got up to about a thousand, but I couldn't sustain that many people with the amount of farms and production I had. I had seven farms. I think I had 20 cow sheds or something. It was an insane amount of production that I'd built up. It was quite ridiculous. So now I am very interested to see, okay, because these people have food because they moved in out of nowhere, but they came from somewhere else. They didn't really have too much, but these, uh, look at all these paths kind of crisscrossing through the forest. We might have to do something about that. I don't want a lot of really straight lines here. So I think, yeah, here comes some trading boats. What does this one got? Fish. Yeah, so that's going to get unloaded. And then we will have some fish. I think we might be causing part of our problem trying to export so much raspberry and onions. So I think to be safe, we can actually reduce this. We'll reduce those two, and then we'll come over here to our land trading post. And we will also reduce our stock of raspberries. Salt is still fine. But I think this was causing problems with our supply because there's just really not enough to go around with that. But eventually the food supply issues will go away because we will have stuff to replace that with. We've got for the chickens. They should be fine. Horses are... We can stop breeding horses. That's ridiculous. We can actually probably slaughter some of these. Yeah, he's getting old. She's getting old. Yes, yeah, so we'll slaughter those three so we can actually sell some uh, some horse meat. And there goes our uh, trading ship sailing away. When's the last time I built a slaughterhouse? Okay, I've got one here, one there. We just have those two. Wow. Okay. That seems like an oversight. I could probably build another one at some point, maybe. But our food uh, supply issues seem to be going away. So I suppose now is as good of a time as any to wrap up today's episode. Thank you so much for your patience with the uh, game crashing and then all of this fun stuff. But we did get some other things accomplished. We built an additional church. This path is starting to go away. We built an additional church. We built some more water down here. Actually, I didn't change these to only be for citizens in this iteration. Before the crash, I had fixed that. And the two fishing docks just finished. So we will go ahead and apply that to all and apply that to all. Just We'll come back and mess with that a little bit later. And then, of course, we have our 10 houses in the forest. Let me know if you think this is a cool idea. I guess I could have built houses with gardens in the forest as well, but I figured it would be more fun to just kind of hide the individual houses. Kind of stealthy. I think it's cute. It's fun. I wish I had a little bit lower of a camera angle. That would be a little more interesting to look at. But it's nice, you know, seeing just homes in the forest just peacefully coexisting amongst nature and a little bit of a clearing. It's, it's, it's serene. I like it. I'll try and find a nice one for the thumbnail, but before I do that, I hope you have a fantastic day. Thank you so much for watching. I genuinely enjoy getting to see all the comments and all the positivity and everything people have to say about what's going on in our town, and I can't wait to do it again very, very soon. But we'll have more Dawn of Man coming this weekend, and... We will see what the future holds for this playthrough as well. But that's all we got for today. We'll see you next time.